Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and today we're going to be upgrading the RAM in our Acer A515-43. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we're going to be upgrading the RAM in our Acer A515-43, part of the Aspire range. And I quite often get the question in the comments, because we've done a few videos on this particular model now, and it is really, really popular. Quite often they sell it with only 4 gigs of RAM or 8 gigs of RAM. And really for Windows these days, when you're running a few tasks or you've got a load of tabs open, 16 gigabytes is really where you want to be aiming for on a Windows device. So we reached out to our friends at Silicon Power and they graciously agreed to send us a new kit of RAM. This is the Silicon Power uh, 8 gig twin pack, so 16 gigs in total. This is DDR4-26666, which is absolutely perfect for this device. And in the video today, I'm going to show you how to strip it all down, how to install the RAM, and actually going to do some testing to see if there's any improvements. So, let's get straight into it. Okay, so to get started, first of all, we're going to be using this in today's video. This is the Silicon Power RAM, as I said. So, two sticks of 8 gigs, making us a total of 16 gigabytes, which is awesome. So, we're going to install that. Now, to do this, we're going to need a cross-headed screwdriver, like this one. Uh, also, probably going to need a little plastic pluck just to prise the sides open. Um, ideally, put something soft on the surface underneath the laptop, like a microfiber cloth. That's really helpful to stop scratching the lid, that kind of thing. And if you want to, get yourself one of those anti-static strips. I've currently got mine connected to me uh, on my waistband, so we're all good, no problems there. Nice and statically safe. So we've got a few screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to quickly take all those out. So we'll uh, just unscrew those and put them to one side. So that is all the uh, screws taken out. So now what we do is take our little plastic wedge and just lever around the outside edges of the unit. And it should come up. If you pry it slightly as you go round. comes off pretty easily. So that reveals the uh, inside of the guts of the machine. So these are the two RAM sticks there and there. So we'll take those out first of all. Now we do is with these little spreaders, just literally pull them apart and it flies out. There we go. So there is our RAM. As you can see, those are uh, micron units, four gigabytes. And they are 26666 also, so fantastic. They don't actually run at that speed in the unit. They run uh, a little bit slower than that. But 266 is pretty much the sweet spot of where you want to be if you can. This particular BIOS doesn't have any uh, options for overclocking or manually setting the RAM. So you pretty much have to rely on what it does for itself. So again, these are the silicon power RAM sticks. These are a really good choice. They're very good value for money even if I had to pay for them, which I didn't because they were sent to me for review purposes. But even that, I would probably buy them anyway. These are really good and they also come with that fantastic lifetime warranty, which is awesome. So yeah, you've got no issues or concerns there. Now the thing that some people have noticed about this is when you're installing it, because the notches are both in the same place, you have to have one RAM stick the right way round and one stick the wrong way round, kind of. Now when they actually build these, they actually put them in Sorry, that way round. So it is okay. It just make sure you line up the notches and you're absolutely fine. If you've got it and you're trying to put it in like this with the sticker side up and the notch there doesn't not doesn't line up with the notch there, then just flip it round and you're good to go. Now what you need to do is put the RAM in at a slight angle. So rather than going sort of straight in like that, just on a slight angle like that and push it in. Give it a little wiggle, just make sure that it's actually firmly seated in, and then gently lower it down and it'll snap into place. And if you want to, you can give it a little tweak just to make sure it's in, but that's all done good. Again, with these, make sure you're lining up the notches carefully with the notch on the motherboard. And make sure it's seated in nicely. Click it in. And make sure, yeah, that one is in right. Sometimes you get a little click when they go in, sometimes you don't, but anyway, that is pretty much it. So now what we need to do is to do the exact reverse. It, obviously, while you're in here, if you want to, clean out the dust and then the fans, that kind of stuff, but otherwise uh, we're ready to 
fire it back up. So we'll just put the lid back on. I won't go through that with you. We'll get that done and then we'll go straight back into our Windows desktop. Okay, so we're back and everything's boosted up absolutely perfectly as I expected. I didn't expect any problems whatsoever from good old silicon power. They do make some really reliable RAM and we've gone back in. I've got CPU Z up and running. Now previously, I've got to look at my notes now. Previously we had three different, uh, sorry, two different readings. This is the third reading. The first reading I took was uh, prior to the BIOS update, which uh, you can check out in the video up here, which uh, we got a CPU score of 312 and then a multi-core of 1553.6, which at the time I thought was a little bit on the low side um, compared with what we've had previously from this, but that is the result we got. I did run it a couple of times and it came back the same, so I'm not sure what happened there. So then after that, we did the BIOS update and from the BIOS update, we got uh, 372 on the single core and uh, 1800 on the multi-core. So definitely a step in the right direction with the BIOS update. And as you can possibly see from the screen already, which is recording over there, so hopefully you can see it. Um, the current one that we've got is a 387.8 on the single core and we've got 1887.8 on the multi-core. So um, yeah, a little bit of a step up. The single core, not so much, uh, but the multi-core we've got getting on for almost an extra 100 points there, or 87 points. So not a massive difference in terms of performance, but we definitely got some more breathing room previously. With this, uh, just with Windows booted up and very little else going on, we were in about 53% of our RAM usage, which isn't ideal, uh, especially when we've got integrated GPU here, which likes to share as much RAM as it possibly can. Um, it does do it dynamically, but whatever is available, it will try and grab hold of. So hopefully now the games will be a little bit better, a little bit quicker, and generally things like our live streams, which we do on a Saturday night, will be a little bit easier. I won't have to worry about RAM with OBS running and those kinds of things. And just general productivity. It's always nice to have as many tabs as you want open within Chrome or Edge and not have to worry too much about sort of memory usage or things slowing down, that kind of stuff. So overall, very impressed, very happy. Uh, Silicon Power, again, thank you very much to them for sending the RAM sticks out. If you want to check them out, I will put some affiliated links in the video description. Or you can just visit them yourself at www.silicon-power.com. So that pretty much wraps things up. Nice, simple, easy upgrade to do and gives another little bit of lease of life to our trusty Acer Aspire. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, quick amendment to the video and an add-on. So if you've stayed all the way through to the very end of the video, well done, because you got some better results here. And I've just literally, before we turn the cameras off and the, the stream off, etc., I thought, oh, I'll just click on it again, bench CPU once more. And I've actually got even better results again. So now we've got 393.6 on a single core, and on the multi-core, we've got 1929.8. So I don't know what is going on there, whether it's because Windows was still trying to load something in the background, so I'm just going to run it again quickly. The, uh, you guys can hopefully see this, which is going to be appearing on the screen. And yeah, it looks like well, actually it's getting better again. I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. Maybe the system's working out what it can and can't do with this RAM and it's just uh, jacking it up a little bit. It seems to be increasing. Come on. Yes. Oh, we've just broken the 400 mark on the single core and 1929.9 on the multi-core. I'm going to run it again. Is it going to get any higher or are we going to find our kind of limitation now? I can't remember what I just said that we had. So we've got a 1926. I think we had 1929 just now. And we're we going to get the 400 again. No, a little bit lower. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. We've basically got nothing going on in the background. It may well be Windows updates or uh, trying to do them, do something in the background is 2020 and there's all sorts of updates and weirdness going on at the moment so who knows but we're definitely seeing improved figures here with the silicon power ram so yeah if you've watched this to the very end you've seen me be very surprised by the results so anyway i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching